ever wrestled with that feeling? Like your, your whole digital world, you know, all those important files, photos, memories. It just feels like this big, complicated knot. Uh -huh. Like it's just waiting to snag and maybe, I don't know, fall apart. Yeah, I think a lot of us feel that pressure. What if there was a better way? A way to organize it all, make it safer, maybe even speed things up using tools that are, well, surprisingly within reach. Mm. Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're tackling exactly that. We're looking into building your own successful home lab, basically uh, your personal server set up at home. Right, like a DIY control center for your digital life. Yeah. Storing data safely, running cool apps, really taking ownership. Exactly. And when people start down this road, a few key open source tools usually pop up pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. You got things like... Um... Proxmox, mm -hmm. fantastic platform for managing virtual machines and containers too. Okay. Then there's TrueNAS. Yeah. That's an operating system really, really focused on storage, known for like its data protection features, rock solid. And for folks wanting to get away from, say, Google Drive or Dropbox. Well, that's where Nextcloud comes in a self hosted alternative. Yeah. And uh, Image is doing something similar for photos, like a replacement for Google Photos. Okay. So you've got these powerful specialist tools. But the big question we're diving into today, and it's something we hear a lot from home lab folks, is how do you actually combine these, specifically Proxmox and TrueNAS? Mm. How do you get them working together effectively without creating this, I don't know, complicated mess that's just more trouble than it's worth? It's tempting to just jump in the easiest way, isn't it? It really is. And that temptation, that instinct, often leads people down a specific path. Which is? Well, installing TrueNAS as a virtual machine inside Proxmox mm -hmm. and then running apps like Nextcloud or Image within that TrueNAS VM using its app system or containers. Right. On the surface, that looks neat. Everything under one roof, kind of, streamlined. It's convenient, yeah. yeah. All in one solution. The source material we looked at even has this uh, clever description for it. Calls it a virtualization inception sandwich. Huh. Yeah. That's pretty good. You've got Proxmox, the main hypervisor. Yeah. Then inside that, TrueNAS running as a VM. And then inside that TrueNAS VM, you've got your apps in containers, layers upon layers. VMs within VMs, essentially, yeah. yeah. All running inside an OS that's fundamentally designed for storage. Okay. Let's unpack that. Why? Why might this seemingly easy setup actually be, well, maybe not the best long-term strategy for a home lab? What are the pitfalls here? Well, it's interesting because while it seems simple to set up initially, this layering, it can bring some real drawbacks. Like what? Performance? Performance is a big one, yeah. Think about it. Each layer adds a bit of distance from the actual hardware. That means overhead. Okay. So you're adding overhead at each step, Proxmox, then the TrueNAS VM, then the container inside the VM. It can slow things down. Accessing data, app responsiveness. Yeah. It all takes a hit. Like passing a message down a line of people, it gets slower with each person. Exactly. A bit of delay at each stage. And I guess more layers means more things that can potentially break, more complexity. Precisely. Maintenance gets trickier. You're managing Proxmox and the TrueNAS VM and the apps inside it. Troubleshooting. Oh, boy. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, if something goes wrong, trying to figure out where the problem is. Is it Proxmox, the TrueNAS VM? The next cloud container inside TrueNAS, it can be a real headache. Oof. And recovery, too. If you have yeah. a major issue, you might end up having to restore that entire potentially huge TrueNAS VM. That takes time and resources. Okay, so the easy path might actually pave the way for future complications. Not ideal. So what's the better way? What's the secret sauce here? How do we avoid this uh, digital lasagna situation? Well, the secret sauce, if you like, boils down to two key ideas. Separation and modularity. Okay. It's not about ditching TrueNAS or Proxmox. It's about understanding what each tool does best and letting it do just that. Like having specialized tools in a workshop. Right. right. Use the right tool for the right job. I like that. Use a screwdriver for screws, not a hammer. Okay, so what does this more uh, clean cut approach look like in practice? So in this model, you start by installing Proxmox directly on your server hardware. Bare metal, as they say. Right, so Proxmox runs straight on the machine. Fast, light, Exactly. It's built for that. Its job is managing virtual machines and, importantly, these things called Linux containers or LXCs. Then within Proxmox, you create a dedicated virtual machine just for TrueNAS. Okay, a TrueNAS VM. But right. wait, there's a trick here, isn't there? It's not just any VM. How it talks to the drives is different. That is absolutely the crucial point. You need to give that TrueNAS virtual machine direct access to the physical storage drives. How do you do that? 
It's a technique called pass-through, PCI pass-through usually. You're essentially handing control of the disk controller, or the individual disks, directly over to the TrueNAS VM. And why is that so important for TrueNAS? Because TrueNAS is built around its file system, ZFS. And ZFS has all these amazing features for data integrity, snapshots, self-healing. Yeah. But it needs direct, low-level access to the disks to work its magic properly. Uh, okay. Giving it pass-through lets ZFS see the raw drives and manage them fully. Like giving that chef direct access to the freshest ingredients, not pre-chopped stuff from a packet. Gotcha. So TrueNAS owns the drives, essentially, even as a VM. That makes total sense for reliability and probably performance, too. But what about NextCloud and Imish, then? Where do they live in this setup, not inside the TrueNAS VM anymore? Correct. That's the other critical piece of separation. You run applications like NextCloud, Image, Plex, whatever. You run them in separate LXC containers directly on Proxmox. LXCs, Linux containers, you mentioned those. What's the big deal with them compared to, say, just running another VM for NextCloud? LXCs are way, way lighter than full VMs. Yeah. They share the main Proxmox system's kernel, the core of the operating system, oh. which means they use far fewer resources, less RAM, less CPU overhead. They start up almost instantly. They're more efficient. Think of them as, like, supercharged application sandboxes rather than whole separate computers. Okay, so Proxmox is the main conductor here. It runs the TrueNAS VM handling storage with direct drive access, and it runs these separate lightweight LXE containers for all the apps. What are the payoffs for doing it this way? The benefits are pretty significant. First off, performance, like we touched on. LXEs are just faster and less resource hungry for running those kinds of applications compared to putting them inside another VM layer in TrueNAS. Makes sense. Second, flexibility, big one. You can manage each app container independently. Snapshot your next cloud container before an upgrade. Migrate your image container to another Proxmox machine if you expand later, all without touching your core TrueNAS storage setup. Ah, uh, that sounds much better for maintenance. Less risky. Definitely, which leads to resilience. If, say, your next cloud container crashes or has a problem, it's isolated. It's very unlikely to bring down your TrueNAS storage system or your other apps because they're running separately. Okay. And finally, modularity. This is huge for the long term. If you want to upgrade TrueNAS later, much simpler. Want to try a different storage solution eventually? Easier swap. Your apps running in LXCs on Proxmox are decoupled from the storage backend VM. Like upgrading just the speakers in your hi-fi system without replacing the whole thing. Exactly like that. The source analogy was pretty good, too. Yeah. Comparing the all-in-one way to a single tangled thread. Right, where pulling one bit messes everything up. Yeah. And this separation method is like a well-organized cable management setup. Everything has its place. It's neat, easy to trace. Anyone who's wrangled cables behind a desk can appreciate that. So digging a bit deeper, then, TrueNAS and ZFS, that's clearly a cornerstone for the storage part. Why ZFS? What makes it so special for home labbers? Well, like I mentioned, ZFS is fundamentally about data integrity, keeping your data safe. It has built-in checksums everywhere. It constantly checks if your data has degraded, what they call bit rot. If it finds an error and you have redundancy, like mirrors or RAID Z, it can often automatically repair it. That's huge. Wow. Okay. Self-healing data. Pretty much. Plus, its snapshot capabilities are fantastic. You can take instant snapshots of your entire data set, roll back if something goes wrong, like ransomware or a bad deletion. It's incredibly robust protection against data loss. Okay, absolutely vital if this server holds your irreplaceable photos or critical documents. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So TrueNAS with ZFS, getting that direct disk access via pass-through, that's your super reliable storage foundation. Got it. And then running the apps, the services like NextCloud or Imish in those Proxmox LXCs, why is that the perfect match? You said they're lightweight. Yeah, it's it's simplicity and power combination. LXCs are ideal for these kinds of services. Yeah. Things that need to interact with storage, yes, but are primarily applications. Hmm. File sharing, cloud sync, photo hosting, media streaming. Hmm. They do those jobs really efficiently in an LXC without needing the overhead of a full operating system dedicated just to them, which is what a VM essentially is. Proxmox handles the container management beautifully. So it's like TrueNAS is the super secure vault for the data, and Proxmox with LXCs provides the efficient, flexible storefronts or access points for that data. That's a great way to put it, a clear division of labor. Mm. And thinking long term, this setup feels much more future-proof, when you say? Absolutely. The source material definitely emphasized that. How does this separation help with future-proofing? Several ways. Scaling, for one. 
need more power for your apps, you could add another Proxmox server, another node, and easily migrate some of those LXC containers over. Your storage on the TrueNAS VM stays put. Much smoother scaling. Oh. Upgrading TrueNAS itself, yeah. less scary. You're just dealing with that one VM isolated from your running applications. And disaster recovery. Using something like Proxmox Backup Server, you can back up and restore those small LXC containers very quickly. If something bad happens, you can get your apps back online fast, while your main storage pool, which might be huge, can remain untouched or restored separately if needed. You avoid that all-or-nothing restore scenario. Gives you a feeling of control, less lock-in. Totally. You're not tied to one monolithic system that has to do everything. Now, we should acknowledge... The source did mention why that all-in-one approach, running apps inside TrueNest, is tempting, especially for newcomers. Things like the App Store and TrueNest Scale, Docker support, it looks easier on the surface. It does, and for some very simple use cases, maybe it's okay, but there are definite trade-offs, as the source highlights. What are the main ones again? Remind us. Well, generally, less fine-grained control over the container setup. Networking can be fiddlier. Troubleshooting, as we said, is way more complex with those extra layers. Yeah. Your apps are tightly coupled to your storage OS, which isn't always ideal. Mm. And that risk during a failure or restore, potentially having to deal with the entire stack at once. Right. Putting all your digital eggs in one slightly complex virtual basket. Okay. What about that other end of the spectrum? Just running TrueNAS directly on the hardware, bare metal TrueNAS, no Proxmox at all. That's definitely a valid option too. And it has strengths. Such as? Potentially the absolute best storage performance because there's no virtualization layer at all for the storage OS. And it can be simpler to set up if, and this is the key point, mm -hmm. if all you want is a really solid network-attached storage device, a NAS, pure and simple. But if you want more, if you want that self-hosted cloud, the media server, the other bits. Then you start missing out on what Proxmox brings to the table. Like it's web interface for managing everything. Exactly. Proxmox gives you that unified, easy to use web UI for managing not just VMs, but also those super efficient LXEs, mm -hmm. creating them, snapshotting them, backing them up. It's all integrated. It lets you run all those non-storage services cleanly, efficiently, without needing a whole VM for each one. So the source conclusion is pretty clear. For just storage, bare metal TrueNAS is great, but for a versatile multi-purpose home lab, Proxmox is the foundation with TrueNAS virtualized inside it with pass-through is arguably the more powerful and flexible approach. And people who've actually made the switch, moving from maybe the all-in-one or other setups to this Proxmox first separated model, yeah. they're seeing real benefits. Oh, definitely. The report's consistently positive. Yeah. People talk about how much easier their whole system is to manage. How so? Those LXCs boot instantly, they use noticeably fewer resources. Backups are simpler and faster because you're backing up smaller independent containers. Upgrades, whether it's Nextcloud in its LXC or TrueNAS in its VM, feel safer and more controlled. Less stressful. Much less stressful. And scaling, like adding more services or even more hardware later, just feels more logical and less disruptive. So it really moves beyond just getting it working towards building something. Mm -hmm. Well, sustainable, resilient. Exactly. It fosters this sense of control of confidence. You know, you can tweak one part without breaking everything else. You can recover specific things quickly. It's about building a well-architected home lab, not just a functional one. So wrapping this up, building your own server, your home lab, it's definitely empowering. But the real win, the key to avoiding those headaches down the road, seems to be this idea of modularity, separation, understanding the right role for each tool. Absolutely. Proxmox as the hypervisor foundation, TrueNAS is the dedicated storage engine in its own VM with direct hardware access, and then your apps living happily in their lightweight LXC containers. You get the best of all worlds, really. You do. You get that robust ZFS data protection from TrueNAS. You get the efficiency and flexibility of LXC containers for your services. And you get a whole system that's resilient and easier to scale and manage. It feels like the real secret isn't necessarily more tech or more powerful hardware, but just, you know, understanding where each piece fits best. Building it smart. Precisely. Build smart, separate for success. That's the core message. So thinking about your own digital setup, maybe your current one or when you're planning, what's one area where you could now see this idea, this power of separation really making a difference for you? How might it change how you manage your data or approach self-hosting? Mm, good question to ponder. In this deep dive, we've really unpacked how strategically separating Proxmox and TrueNest, giving each its proper role, can lead to a home lab that's more robust, way more efficient, and ultimately just easier to live with.
We hope you'll consider these ideas of modularity and using the right tool for the job in your own tech projects. Join us next time for another deep dive.